Welcome to our tutorial on the Zip 49G phone. 49G is the high-end model of our lineup. It's got a touchscreen display and supports a video camera as an optional add-on. This phone has a dedicated EHS headset board and it also has built-in support for Bluetooth headsets. If you need to place your phone far away from an Ethernet board, we also have a built-in Wi-Fi option on this phone. If your company has our UC client Zach, all our phones are completely compatible with it so you can control your phone calls from your desktop application or by pressing buttons on the phone. For this video, we will be using the phone buttons only. Check out our videos on Zach to find out how to control your phone calls from the desktop application. To start this video, we will go over general layout of the phone. Obviously, the main part of the phone's panel is the 10,024 pixel by 600 pixel screen display. Above the screen is the optional camera. We're going to show it in our video, but it does not come standard with your phone. On the left side of the screen, we have icons for phone dialer to make outbound calls, followed by directory below it, and lastly, history for the record of your incoming and outgoing calls. To the right are the soft keys. Top three soft keys are the line keys. The rest of the buttons on the right can be customized. The soft keys are quick shortcuts to phone's functionality that can be configured by your system administrator. And if you want, you can click to expand this menu to add up to 27 programmable keys in total. What kind of soft key shortcuts can you configure? There are many different options. Dedicated speed dial, busy lamp field to monitor the status of your coworker's phone, a button to log you into a call group to get group calls, or a button to initiate on-demand DVR call recording. You can designate a button to initiate a page or to monitor a particular park slot. We have a separate video on custom buttons for zip phones on zeltas.com. Anyway, back to the 49G screen. As I said earlier, this display runs on Android OS platform, so it's got standard Android buttons on the bottom, back, return to home screen, and view all current open ads. You can scroll right on the home screen to access two more screens. The second screen has the apps like email or browser, and the third screen has the widgets. Both these screens can be customized with the items you want to use. Tap an empty spot and select widget over here to see a choice of what you want to add. From the home screen, slide down to get to the contact and notification center. You can turn on some common function from here like do not disturb or silence the phone's ringer. You can take a screenshot of the phone screen also. This is where you can also get to the settings screen. The bottom half of the screen will have any unread notification of missed calls, and you can dismiss them either one by one or all at the same time. There's a message waiting indicator on the top right of the screen. It will flash when you have an incoming call. It will also flash continuously if you have a new voice message. On the main phone panel, there is mute and headset. Headset button can be used to switch the audio for a call you're on to headset. Obviously, this will only work if you're using a headset. Below is redial, which you can use to quickly call back a number you just dialed. At the bottom is the speaker button for answering calls on speaker. Moving left on the main panel, there's the dial pad, and when you finish dialing a number, press the send key to initiate a call. It works like a cell phone send button. Further on the left, we have a dedicated transfer button. We will see it in action later in the video. Then there is the button for placing calls on hold. To remove a call from hold, press the button for the second time. By the way, the hold and transfer functions are also available at the buttons you can tap on the display while you're on an active call. It doesn't matter where you press the button. Below is the voice message button. You can click it to access your voice messages. And lastly, you can click this button to adjust the volume. So now that you know the layout of your phone, let's see it in action. When you get an incoming call, you can pick up the receiver or click the speaker button to answer on speaker. Alternatively, tap answer on the screen. If you're using a headset, you can answer the call with your headset by clicking the headset button, or you can click the button on the headset itself. To make an outbound call, tap the dialer icon up here. Dial the number and tap send or pick up the receiver. If the person you are dialing also has video capabilities, you can select video call. By the way, even if you are calling a 49G phone that doesn't have a camera, it can still receive your video. To end a call, you can hang up the receiver or tap end call button or the speaker button if you're using speaker. Now let's see what you need to do to check a missed call. The message waiting indicator is flashing to show that you have a new voice message and the display has a note about a missed call. 
tap here to view to see the caller ID for the missed call, or you can just click the call button back immediately. If I dismiss the pop-up, I can view my recent call from this history button, and you can make a call right on this screen to call this person back. To listen to the voicemail message, click on the voicemail button. You will need to provide your voicemail password. Your first time accessing the voicemail box, you will be prompted to set up a password and your quarter your name and greeting. This is a very straightforward process. Just follow the instructions and it will only take a few minutes. Now let's take a look at other options you have while on an active call. You can place the call on hold with the hold key or with the hold button on the screen. To go back to this call, tap resume or press the designated hold button down here again. I can park a call so that a coworker can pick it up from another device. I press the park button and the screen will show the number of the park slot. For example, this call is parked in slot 01. To pick up a call, go to the dialer menu, select this pickup option and type 01 for the park slot. You can transfer calls to your coworkers and numbers outside your organization. There are several ways to transfer a call. Which way you use depends on whether you want to transfer the call immediately whether you want to check if the number you are transferring to is valid first, or you may want to talk with the other person before completing the transfer. For example, I'm on a call with a customer who needs help from our billing department. Very simple and straightforward, I'm going to press the transfer button. This automatically places the call on hold for me while I dial the number of the extension and then clicks the transfer button again. But let's say I want to make sure there's somebody answering the billing calls before I transfer the caller. I don't want to take a chance that all agents in the department are too busy to answer the call when I transfer it. I start by pressing the transfer button. With my caller on hold, I type the extension, but this time I press send. The line is ringing, which means somebody is there to take the call, so I can safely press the transfer button again. This will send my customer on to the billing department. And for the last type of transfer, I want to talk to the billing department first before transferring the caller to them. The first few steps are the same as previous example. I press the transfer button, dial the extension, then send. But this time, I stay on the line until the call is answered. Hey Lisa, I've got Mr. Customer on another line, and he's saying his last payment didn't go through. Oh, you want me to transfer him to you? No problem. All I gotta do is press the transfer button. Or not. This client needs to speak to their account representative rather than billing? Okay then, I'll cancel my call to Lisa call from customer is still on hold and I can now dial his account representative's extension to transfer Mr. Customer there. For the next feature, let's create a three-person conference. I'm on the call with Mr. Customer and I want to conference in our billing rep so that we can discuss his issues together. I place my call with the customer on hold and select another line, line 2 specifically in this example. Then I dial the extension and send. Hey Lisa, I'm talking to Mr. Customer. His payment didn't go through. Can I conference you in so that we can discuss what's going on? Great! I can just drag this call session onto the other one. Now all three of us are in a conference together. If you're bad at remembering extension numbers, you can access a directory of the contacts on the phone system by tapping the directory button, then contacts. From here, you can initiate a call directly to the contact. Finally, I'm going to discuss some features you can access through the settings. To get to this menu, slide down on the screen to get to the Contacts and Notification Center and select Settings. From the main setting windows, I can connect to Wi-Fi. From the Bluetooth menu, I can enable Bluetooth and pair it with my wireless headsets. I want to specifically mention call forwarding. It's a useful feature where I can forward my calls to another number or another extension. For example, I'm going to be traveling for a while and I want to forward all my calls to a coworker while I'm out. You can forward all incoming calls with always, forward calls only when you're busy with another call, or forward calls that you don't answer. We will do always. I'll switch this line to enabled and on the second line enter the extension of the coworker and then save the setting by clicking on the check mark in the top right. And from now on, all my calls will be forwarded directly to this coworker. When I get back to the office, all I need to do is go back to this menu and set call forwarding to disabled, and then save. And that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching.